This is the story of a man behaving badly and the devil doing what the devil does. It is the story of Georg John Johannes Faustus. This is the Faust of legend and literature, of opera and oratorio, the Faust of Christopher Marlowe and Thomas Mann, of Charles Gounod, of von Goethe. A boy, John Faustus, is born of poor parents in a small town in Germany and is sent to be cared for by a rich uncle in Wittenberg. Ow! Mm. Mm. Mm, good. <laughs> if you ask me where I stand on the old smoked versus unsmoked debate, then I have to answer smoked every time. A few moments more, like the fat to darken, but not burn. Now then, in due course, young Faustus turns into a clever clogs, is put to study at the university, and impresses his masters very much indeed. But there's a string of contrariness in Faustus. He has a naughty mind that is drawn to darkness. Even so, he graduates with full honours, is made a doctor of divinity, and in his turn becomes a teacher as well. Plate, 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 well played. But, as you will probably already have guessed, there was no shaking those perverse fascinations, and as the years passed, he became increasingly resentful of the academe that bought his bread, that stifled his spirit. Never anything to sit on around here. Have to have a stool on account of these. Chairs with backs are no good. You see? Aristotle says, to argue well is the goal of logic. I say, yeah, kid, tell it to the Marines. Saint Augustine, he say, a woman is a sewer with a temple built over it. I say, yeah, please, I'll have some of that. Saint Jerome says, the wages of sin is death. I say, cobblers, get your sin sack sorted out and show me the money, boys. There's got to be more. There has to be more. Be brave, Faustus, old fellow. I guess there's a pretty good chance the cleaner will come in tomorrow. Find me reduced to a pile of cinders. But what's the alternative? A wizard has to do what a wizard has to do, even if he's pulling himself at the thought of it. Enough of Eastern philosophy, enough of piety. It is magic, magic that has ravished me. Oh, Lordy, that old black magic has me in its spell. Yes, indeed. It's magic. Woo, woo. You better believe it. Woo. It's magic. Woo. Oh, you better believe it. With these spells, I will conjure up a devil to do my bidding. And then the world will see what Dr. Faustus really is. I shall bestride it as a gnashing, growling colossus. I shall drown nations in my seed. Send me here. Oh, you cheeky bugger. 
you know who will pint in What him. are you? A wrongdoer that's been cooked to a turn. Uh, what's happened to your skin? <laughs> Turn to crackling. Now, if you're finished being personal, I reckon it's about time this particular demon had a tasty treat off you. <laughs> what about those lovely pinkies of yours? Yeah! Foul beast! Be gone! Be gone! <laughs> Are you all right, sir? Of course. Why shouldn't I be? Stress? You academics. You know, just the other week, Dr. Quadricop had a nervous breakdown and spent the afternoon chasing up and down the cloisters, shouting he'd seen the future and it was our end. <laughs> of course, no one knew what he meant on account of this is the 16th century and no one in Wittenberg has yet seen an orange. <laughs> You know what, sir? What? You really need to get out and about more. You're a very funny colour these days, on account of staying in and working all the time. And those strange powders you keep mixing and burning. You're more pale green than pink, like a person ought to be. <laughs> You're looking your old self a bit more. Out in the fields. Cast me back to long ago. The smell of the spring grass. I was young and it was all so beautiful. Indeed, sir. But it's starting at dark and the watch will be going home soon. Then the apprentice boys will be out in their hoodies. We don't want to get turned over, do we, sir? What's that over there? I don't like it. It's only a dog, sir. Looking for its master. Can you see the way it leaves a trail as it weaves about? A trail? A tail, you mean? Don't be obtuse. Look, a trail of pale fire. It flows out from behind the dog and fades. Like a thread of mist with a cool fire at its heart. Cool fire? It's your imagination, sir. I'm glad I don't have one. He's lost, that's all. And he looks like he wants to come home with us. Not sure it's such a terrific idea, sir. Having some old stray staying in here. I suppose it's got a disease. Thank you for accompanying me to the Heath, Wagner. Now, why don't you retire? I've got work to do. You sure you want him in here? There'll be a bit of company as I work. Through the night. I could be your bit of company. I want to be just like you, sir. I want to learn from you. A little bit of you goes a long way, Wagner. I'm not saying this because I'm lonely or, or, or queer or something like that. I'm not a queer, as it happens. As Denise in the scullery will vouch. Because we usually touch each other up on a Wednesday. No. It's because I want power, and I reckon you've got the key to it. I don't know what or how, but I do know there's a buzz a humming about you, like the wings of a huge bumblebee. And that says you've got the power in you, and I want some of it. Very interesting now. Why don't you leave me to it? Are you sure you wouldn't rather... Good night! Wagner. Sir. Fasten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy night. Please allow me to introduce ah, myself. Ah, Mephistopheles ah. is the name. You gave me a fright. I... How did you get in here? What? What is your business? <laughs> a devil out of hell is who I am. No ordinary devil either, I like to think. I can't open my wings in here. I'd take your knickknacks off the shelves just like that. But you'll have to believe me, they're very impressive. Grey-blue tinted iron feathers beaten so thin they ripple as the hot air rises from the oven. I asked about your business. I have a certain license from my master. He extends me privileges, the right to roam up here to observe and be diverted as I see fit, provided, naturally, there's something in it for him at the end of the day. You knew I tried calling up spirits. Of course. 
I was out on the prowl, looking for some diversion when I heard your summons. Obviously, one of my colleagues got you first, but I thought I'd follow up. As soon as I saw you, I knew I'd found just what I needed to keep me entertained for a while. What are you talking about? <laughs> I could piss you away any time, you know. <laughs> Actually, you can't. Oh, you do have power over the sinful turned devil, but I'm not one of them. They're the broiler hens to my roasted swan. I'm an angel gone bad at the dawn of it all. I was at Satan's right hand when he opened his great maw and shouted in the face of God. I have seen attack ships. Drift off the belt of Orion. I have burned bright and twice as hot. I have danced with wolves and cavorted in the heat of the night. I am the Death Star and the Terminator. And the awful news is, Faustus, I can come and go as I please. So why aren't you in hell? Why, this is hell. Nor am I out of it. I always pause for effect there. I so enjoy that line. It lends stature to an otherwise seedy business. Will you obey me, then? I will, if you'll agree to what's required. Yeah. So there are contracts in hell, too, now. <laughs> Indeed. And we never renege. We'll talk about it later. For now, I know, like your servant, a little of me goes a long, long and even longer way. What's that smell? Uh, bacon. I'm very partial to it, but the scent does follow one about. But don't go! I shall, as there's maintenance to do, keeping the coals going and the sores running. But don't fret, I'll be back. Whose sores? Who do you think? But there are such things. What things? Such things that only you can show me. I want them, Mephistopheles. And you want them so badly that the smell of suffering... For well, that's what it is, and it isn't bacon, my dear. The smell of suffering doesn't put you off. No. I want all those things out there in the wide world. And you'll enjoy them all the more for having waited. My life has all been waiting. Millions die waiting, but not for me. Not me. No more waiting. No more fear. It'll be seen to, Faustus. Farewell. <laughs> but not too well. And so we distract each other with whimsy, all the time pretending that we are equals and denying the fact of Faustus's constant cowering, hair-on-end fear of me of his own life, of his past, present and future, of the paintings he did at school that imitated the goriness of the divine comedy. But most of all, of himself and his propensity to lay waste everything good that comes into his life. The truth of me, on the other hand, is that I am twelve feet tall, my wingspan is twenty-seven feet, I have the power to mesmerize and no conscience to check it. And I come into all your lives without a by your leave. so far. I'm Mephistopheles, and I'm a bit of a devil. I don't mean that figuratively. I don't mean I get tanked up on the old Rhenish and go out on a Friday night looking for a fat girl who flashed me her bum in the street, and maybe, if I'm lucky, find myself a watchman to swear at. No, I mean I'm a real devil. A fully paid up, dawn of time, cast out by his holiness, twelve foot high, fallen angel. And, as you'll have guessed, I am constantly tortured by the bereavement of having seen the face of God and being forever denied him. I tell jokes, mooch about with a Samuel Beckett novel in my pouch, occasionally grow a goatee and pretend I'm an all-round intellectual with a convincing bead on the rank humour of existence. But that's front. In fact, I'm a tortured soul myself bent on taking others with me, and alternately I howl at the moon, celebrating the great list of the damned, and cry into my cups at the tragedy of it all. So, lost my thread there, didn't I? Yes, 
The story so far. I have begun my invasion of one Johannes Faust, a Wittenbergian doctor of divinity, a detective of natural philosophy, which in your terms means a crankish half-scientist, half-fortune teller. Your equivalent would be a bloke from Ipswich who brings his invention to the dragon's den, looking like his mum still dresses him. Anyway, frustrated by academic studies and living on a lecturer's stipend, he has given way to the black arts and invited me into his life. real and what isn't it's like it's like when you wake up and you've murdered someone in a dream and and then for a few minutes it seems completely real and a dog in the park who looked like a dog and then he looked like a man and then a dog again huge demon devil sorry a huge devil standing over there Taking up half of this room. So, are we still on? What for? I'm assuming you have decided to turn to the dark side for all the nefarious benefits thus far denied you by the straight and narrow path. Nefarious benefits? Oh, come on. We know what we're talking about here. You're staring down the barrel of a life fixed by penury in the company of tedious, self-flagellating Christian seekers after truth. Like every other man in the world, you have those nights when you just can't sleep when gross images flood into your mind of what you'd like to do with the fair-haired girl who serves those naughty steak bakes and greggs you watch your vital fluids making great diagonal action paintings up the walls you dream of punching the college bursa full in the face and mashing his nose to a pink pulp of living happily on a bucolic farm populated by girls in skimpy wet cheesecloth frocks made transparent by the horizontal rays of a perfect summer evening Oh, don't you? Yes. I do. Then let's talk business. All right. You're going to have fun. So will you. Ah, sorry, Faustus, but there's nothing you can imagine that I haven't already seen, done, and got the badge for a hundred times over. Now, to continue, it's just a little matter of your signature on this contract, if it's to your satisfaction. Of course. <laughs> I can't read it very well. Brown doesn't show up against the parchment. What sort of ink is this? You don't want to know. Don't I? I'll just say one word. Hemorrhoids. Why don't you read it to me? It says that I shall cast spells that shall render you invisible to other human beings and thus enable you to engage in whatever naughty goings-on take your fancy. It goes on to say that I'll be at your command and shall do your bidding. Really? I wouldn't get too carried away with that bit. I prefer negotiation to top-down management. So, roughly speaking, I've got to do whatever you ask and bring you whatever you want. And then it finishes off with a legal bit. I shouldn't bother reading that. If I'm going to sign it, I need to know what it says. Pedant. It says, I, John Faustus of Wittenberg, do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister, Mephistopheles, and grant unto them that four and twenty years being expired, I submit full power to fetch the said John Faustus, body and soul, flesh and blood, into their habitation. Habitation? Let's not get prissy. You know what it's saying. Will it be worth it? That depends on the scope of your imagination, on what you're going to ask for. No. Then I'll sign. Ah, uh, this being such an important document will use something a little more potent than ink. A drop of your blood will do perfectly. Uh, this won't hurt at all. Just a prick is all I want from you. Hold out your hand. Look the other way. Ow! Now bleed onto the paper, if you don't mind. We'll use this nib to draw the ink. That's right. Done. 
Very good. So, when can we start? Right away. What do you wish for? Oh, master. <laughs> uh, uh, first, I'd like to get a bit spruced up. Not before time. Then uh, I thought a spot of travel would do me the world of good. Mm -hmm. Paris, London, Munich, Istanbul. We'll visit them all. The finest lodgings, the best restaurants. Ah, you can make me invisible. And I, I, I'll, uh, I'll pinch the Holy Roman Emperor's nose. Yes. And we'll have a few more diversions on the way. Easily arranged. But is that the kind of thing you've actually sold your soul for? Come on, Faustus. Dig deeper. What do you really want? Uh, I'd like to have a qualification as a medical doctor. And then I can use it to get young women to strip off so I can examine them. Cooking and and, and what, and, what, what? <laughs> and we can find me a beautiful wife who will do everything I ask for without complaining. A wife, you want a wife, you get to fiddle with the entire female population of Europe between the ages of 16 and 35, or as many as you can fit into 24 years. You can have the daughters, wives, and mistresses of all the crown families of Europe with their decorated clown faces and hair bleached with toddler's urine, if you so choose. And the Mongols and the Arabs and the Aborigines, too, if you want them. I can get you the very best courtesans and queens in all of history. You can have that Roman empress who slept with a hundred men in one go. She'll have tricks for you, no doubt. I just wave my arms about a bit, and there they'll be, in front of you, waiting. You need never have the same one twice, and you won't have to stop until cramp sets in, and yet you're mewling for a wife? I want some affection. A little tenderness. <laughs> Dear listener, it's my turn to pick up the story. Uh, you don't mind, do you? Uh, who am I to mind? You can do pretty much as you like until I call your debt in. If you decide you want to waste your time chatting across the airwaves to a couple of dozen listeners in Haywards Heath, that's your business. Personally, considering you could be upside down and utterly debauched with that nice man on that programme about the British coastline, I don't understand why you're bothering. You're all so desperate to sell your souls, and the moment you do, you've got no idea what to do. Can I talk now? Ah, absolutely. Mum's the word. Well, I was walking Won't back... Won't say a word. I'm only joking. You get on with it. I was walking back from church with my daughter, Gretchen. Thing is, I was a bit rock and roll in my youth. In fact... I had that blonde doll. No. <laughs> yeah. We were in Dusseldorf. His first big gig. He was supporting Chris de Berg. We did it around the back of the pub. Yeah, Chris fancied me too. In fact, someone said Lady in Red was written about me. Anyway, I married a nice bloke and kind of let my past just not sort of be mentioned. And we had Gretchen. And I was determined she wouldn't end up high as a kite, smoking rope and lying in a skip like her mum did. So we were walking back from church and that Faustus spots Gretchen. She was dressed simply with her mousy hair in a Heidelberg facelift and looking, well, offensively pert. <laughs> See that girl there? I want her. Her? Oh, she's just come out of confession. Not that she has anything to confess. She's pure as the driven snow, the little darling. I can't do anything with her. Can't or won't. Remember we have an agreement. 
I don't need to remind you of its terms. Either you get me the girl, or I render our contract void. Very well. I'll do what I can, but it's going to take some time. I want her now. Give us a chance. Ah. I've got an idea. Yes, I'll make sure that before the week is out, you've been inside her bedroom. The first I knew something had happened was when Gretchen came rushing downstairs the next day. She was clutching this strange box, looking very excited. The box turned out to be full of the most amazing jewels. I I've never seen anything like them. There were rubies and emeralds and gold rings and, and bangles and Lord knows what else. Mum, look at what I just found in the bottom of my cupboard. How do you think they got there? Who's could they be? Oh, goodness me. I, I can't imagine. <laughs> Perhaps you've got a secret admirer. <laughs> I wonder what I should do with them. I, I wouldn't want to be accused of stealing or anything. Mm. It was all starting to come together. Of course, you'll have guessed we nicked the jewels out of the church, prized them off various goblets and crosses with these needle-pointed ten-inch fingers of mine. But we'll leave the jewel business as a mystery for now. Let it marinade. Or perhaps fester would be a better word. We were in and out of that girl's bedroom like Billio. Exactly. You can explain yourself. Excuse me, I'm looking for a Frau Martha Schwertlein. I have something important to tell her. You're going to say, why didn't she notice there was something wrong? And it's not a bad point, actually. Given I am 12 feet tall, I have wings covered in iron feathers, and my 10-inch fingers end in pin-sharp talons. You'd think she would have figured something's up as she answered the door. But that's the power of suggestion, you see. Look into my eyes, don't look around me, look at my face, focus on my eyes. And all they actually see is this rather pleasant, utterly human, more human than human face. The face of the uncle they all wish they'd had. When I finally got to the door, well, finally got it open, there was a man standing there, a bit oddly dressed. I couldn't tell how old he was, but he wasn't bad looking. Quite striking, actually. It reminded me of my lovely Uncle Derek, who used to live in a cottage near Brighton. For some reason, I temporarily forgot I didn't have an Uncle Derek, that in the 16th century international travel wasn't much open to the likes of me, and hence I'd never been to and never would go to Brighton. But to me, standing there staring at him, it all made perfect sense. Hello. I wonder if you can help me. I'm looking for Frau Schwertlein, the lady with the daughter called Gretchen. Yeah, that's me. Are you sure you don't want my husband? No, I'm quite sure. I'm afraid my husband isn't in. That's all right. He's at work. It's an awful job and it doesn't pay very much. He's a kind man, but boring. I'm quite glad to have him out of the way. Sometimes they're so taken in by the illusion I project they won't stop talking. If the particular quest isn't very important, I kill them and move on. But on this occasion, I don't have much choice. Christa Berg was so smitten with me, he wrote me a song. It's called The Lady in Red. I didn't know that. That's because my past is a closed book. The girl Gretchen, the one Faustus had set his heart on, was standing about six feet behind her mother, watching a cage in which two rats clutched each other in a death grip. They held each other close, quivering with tension, and occasionally the combined rat lump would lurch as they adjusted their grips. I mention this because the distraction meant she wasn't taken in by my initial effort at mesmerism. 
She only looked straight at me after I'd already done my jiggery-pokery, which meant, I guessed, she saw my human face all right, but my hellish outline also registered as a faint image all about. I assume she thought she must be dreaming, which probably explains the way she stood there with her head on one side with spit coming from the corner of her mouth. Then she shivered and turned her head away. I remember it distinctly. Oh, I beg your pardon, Frau Schwertlein. You obviously have distinguished company. Oh, no, sir. I I'm nobody important. These jewels aren't mine. I, I couldn't possibly afford anything like this. I was just borrowing them. Yeah. Ah, I see. Frau Schwertlein, I have sad news, I'm afraid. Your husband is dead. And sends his greetings. My husband? Dead? I'm afraid so, madam. Dead? My... my husband? I, I, I don't believe it. I'm so sorry, Mum. I'll pray for him. He was a bit boring, though. Mm. Maybe now you could take up with his Christoburg. He sounds interesting. Yeah, assuredly not. Besides which, Nuremberg is too far away. Now, how did he die? He was chopping a tree stump, uh, missed the log, the axe bounced right back off it and lodged itself in the middle of his face. He was so hideously disfigured, the woodcutters put him in a box and buried him on the spot, and so there's nothing for you to see, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm glad. I wouldn't have wanted to see him like that. May I come in? You're very welcome, Uncle Derek. Um, sorry. I don't know why I said that. Can I offer you something? Would you, would you like to sit down? Do all your chairs have backs? Um, yes, I believe so. I won't bother then. I prefer a stool. Oh. I have to say, Frau Schwertlein, I don't imagine you'll be fending for yourself for very long, if you take my meaning. Is that an offer? No. But, Gretchen, how do you think you'll manage without a dad? Especially if your mum decides to run off with a pointy-faced, middle-aged, English, middle-of-the-road musician. Oh, Chris could really rock. Well, Gretchen? I don't know. Do you have a boyfriend? Not really. An ambiguous answer, little minx. I don't have a proper boyfriend. There's Franz and Ferdinand, but they're not boyfriends. I just touched their things as a favour last Christmas. <laughs> you know... I have a friend, Gretchen. You really ought to meet him. He's a clever man. A good job. Very funny. Life and soul of the party. You'd like him. Um, if she doesn't want him, can I have a go? I'm going to have to leave now. Otherwise, I might be forced to kill your mother, Gretchen. Uh, hang about. Pardon me, sir. Not, not that I have any reason to disbelieve you, but I'd like some proof that my husband really is dead. A, a certificate or something. I'll bring it this evening, shall I? Why not? We can have a few drinks in the garden. Hmm? And I'll bring my very respectable friend too, shall I? Oh, please do. By the way, what, what's your job? Why, why were you sent to tell me about my husband? And will this young lady be here too? I'm sure she'll be very happy to meet my friend. He's very presentable. Oh, she'll be here. I've got a garden out the back where we can all have a nice get-together. <laughs> Until later, then. Oh, that man makes my flesh creep. Mm. I've seen worse. Your friend seems to be getting on very well with my mum. He, he, he's very personable. He gets on with most people. Mm. I wonder... Did you recognise me? We've seen each other before, you know. Yes. Outside the church the other day. You were there with that other gentleman. I, I, I don't know what's the matter with me. My eyes go funny when I look at him. Oh, I assure you, Gretchen, there's absolutely mm. nothing the matter with you. He looks at me oddly. If he stares, you shouldn't be surprised. How could he not look at you? You are very beautiful. Oh, you're very kind, Mr Faustus. <laughs> Doctor. Oh, I didn't realise. Your friend said you had a good job. Um, I've got a varicose vein. My mother says I shouldn't have it because I'm too young. It, it's right at the top of my thigh on the inside. Can you look at it for me? Yes, yes, of course. Mm. No, no. Oh. Uh, sorry, I, I, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a doctor of divinity. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. And who could blame you? I can say, in all honesty, that you have not been out of my thoughts since I first set eyes on you. Uh, Come and sit here next to me. Oh. While Faust was sweet-talking the girl, the woman Schwertlein was doing her best to sink her claws into me. 
travel a lot, do you? Yes, my business takes me away from home quite a bit. Never settled down with anyone? The sacrament of marriage, well, to be truthful, sacraments in general, don't mean that much to me. You sure you're not beyond persuasion? <laughs> 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 Although Gretchen had touched Franz and Ferdinand with Christmas, that didn't make her a slut. I was quite smitten with her, actually. Yes, yes, I can hear you yawning, but it's true, I thought the kid was all right. And I surprised myself when I realized I didn't much approve of Faustus getting me to pass my hands over him and make him look like a teenager, so she'd welcome him into her room at night with some hokey pokey. What a splendid night for a spot of rutting. The witch's sabbat approaches. I can feel the sap rising. You'll be busy with your little tart, I take it. Keep your voice down. I don't want her mum to wake up. You drunk? No. I can't drink. It's an accelerant. Not a good idea where I live. Don't call her a tart. But yes, I will be going up to Gretchen's room. Did you bring any presents for her? Mm. I told her I'd put the box of jewels in her room and she nearly fainted. It's like waving coloured beads and the equatorial savages. She loves jewellery. It transfixes her. You don't have to pay for it every time, you know. She's keen enough that she'll service you for free. You bastards! I heard that. Now draw your swords! It was Valentin, the girl's soldier brother. Evidently, he'd got wind of what his precious little sister was up to and had rushed home to defend the family honour. It was short work to deal with him. Don't worry, Faust. Stick close to me and do as I say. What's going on? My arm won't move. Now, you can imagine what one of my digits would do to an eye socket. But, well, maybe you don't have to imagine. No, don't. That wasn't necessary. It was, actually, because if he'd managed to stick you and you'd expired instead of him, then you'd have done a neat dodge and weave and got yourself out of our contract. It would have been the pearly gates instead of chicken in a basket. Time to be leaving, I think. Come, Faust. <sighs> What's happening? Uh, Valentin? <sighs> Oh, oh, my poor brother. Oh, sister. I have something to say to you. Yes, yes, brother. So you've decided to sell yourself to an old toad. Good. It's a sound business decision. Just promise me you'll do it properly. Get your neighbour here, the big fellow with the wings, to advertise your services properly and make sure you get the right rate for the job. Oh, you'll need to save all the money you can. Your looks will be gone quicker than you think. Oh, then you'll be left with rouge and putty to do it for you. And that costs money. Oh. After all, you don't want to end up in the gutter. Oh, Valentin, <gasps> please don't talk like that. I can't bear it. I'm sorry, Gretchen. <laughs> but listen close. From the bottom of my heart, I curse you until your dying day. <laughs> I thought those men were going to make our lives better. And instead, they ruined us. And they weren't even finished. Nah, not by a long way.
Faustus, wake up. We have to leave Wittenberg. <coughs> Why? What's happened? You don't remember, then? Did we go to a party? Ah, uh, not exactly. Am I drunk? I feel... Oh, I feel as if I was drunk. I get such headaches these days, ever since I met you. Think of it as collateral damage. Listen, we have to move on. You do what you like. This is my town. I'm a man of substance here. I'm not going anywhere unless it's for sordid high drinks. And I'm not feeling up to that right now anyway. Get up! We have to go! Oh, for heaven's sake, don't shake your iron feathers at me. Remember, I know you have to do what I say, not the other way around. And I also know you can't hurt me because if I don't live the full 24 years, you don't get my soul. So wind your neck in, mate. Didn't go to a party last night. We went to Gretchen's house. Then her brother Valentin turned up and we did for him. Rather unpleasantly, he managed to muster a curse upon his sister's head before he expired. What all this means is that we have to get out of town and let the heat die down. I'll sort some of my friends to do the rounds, erasing memories and cleaning up evidence, but there's always a chance we'll miss someone or something. This kind of thing goes round like a virus. What's a virus? I'm not going to tell you. A discovery like that at this point in time would change the course of history. There are all kinds of plagues and epidemics to look forward to, and I'm not having you bugger that up. You're a messy pup, Faustus. Oh, poor Gretchen. Oh, poor Gretchen, eh? But I don't see you exactly jumping out of bed to find out how she is. In fact, you don't seem much concerned. I'm going off for a bit. Why is that? She's so sweet and inexperienced. When I ask her to do stuff, she has a go, which is fine. Well, she doesn't do any of it with relish. It's all a bit inept. You know, you want your, I don't know, you want your Helen of Troy type thing. You know, when you're with an augmented bit of brass, your brain knows perfectly well that she's not really enjoying herself. But she puts up a good old smoke screen of oohs and ahs and wiggles that, that, that give you the effect you really need. It's Valpurgisnacht, the witch's sabbat. There'll be plenty of porn stars on offer if that's what you want. Excellent. Now, that sounds worth getting out of bed for. Anyone who knows me knows I'm a cruel wretch at times. Here I am, tainted for all eternity, spoiled by having taken up with Satan and being cast out of heaven alongside him, and determined to bring as many souls to damnation as eternity will allow. But having been made by God, of course, I carry around with me all that duality baggage upon which, I have to tell you, cognitive therapy can't make a dent. And as I don't have serotonin, Prozac's no use either. So you see, my curse is that now and then, usually when I'm least expecting it, the old conscience launches itself out of the gloom, and suddenly there I am, head in hands, gripped by a crisis of empathy. He may think... Poor Gretchen. But I'm the one that's feeling it. So I decided he deserved a bit of a fright. My God. What a bleak place. Where are we? Merthyr Tidville. Where? Joke. You don't need to know. That girl, standing over there, all alone. My God. It's Gretchen. It's her. Mephistopheles, what's she doing here in the freezing cold in her nightdress? I recognize the fall of her hair. The outline of her breasts. Gretchen! Come here! What on earth are you doing? Oh, Faustus! You've come. You've come to save me. Gretchen! Here, let me wrap you in my great coat. Oh, my love, thank you. <laughs> what happened to her? Won't you take me home? You can do what you like with me if you take me home. Get away! Oh. What kind of a thing is that? That's a shape-shifting soul, sucker. A good joke, don't you think? Swapping a beautiful young girl for a creature four feet tall with a head like an old leather football and needles for teeth. Disgusting. Who? You or me? Don't worry, the stains will come out with boiling. When she was... When it was still Gretchen. Why did it have that horrible bruise around its neck? The shapeshifter always takes the latest and most up-to-date appearance of the person it copies. What do you mean? Let's move on. I asked you, why has she got that mark around her neck? 
Come back. Don't walk away. Going on? <laughs> Am I supposed to be learning something? Is this some kind of ironical torture intended to bring me to an understanding of the true nature of our contract? I have to tell you that your self righteousness is becoming a bloody bore. What happened to the fun guy? Prankster Mephistopheles. Oh, God. Those women, what are they up to? Ah, they're witches, gathering up the remains of criminals, very handy for spells of various sorts. Got a good haul. Perhaps they've got some of your beloved in there. What beloved? I don't have a beloved. Gretchen, she was your beloved. She was condemned to death a while ago. I think she might already have been hanged. What? Hmm? Bastard. An accurate description, Captain Kirk. But I assume you meant it as an insult. You can cut the sarcasm. What's happened to her? Is she dead then? Actually, no, not yet. But she's in a cell and she'll be hanged in the morning. What was her crime? It's not important. She's in prison still? Yes. Then we have to bust her out. I want you to take me there and we're going to get her out and look after her. Suddenly you've got a conscience. A few moments ago you wanted low-rent porn stars. Now it's all chest puffed out with indignation. Excuse me while I spit. There's a bad taste in my mouth. I am a human being. Just about. I never meant for the girl to suffer. You saw her, you wanted her, you parachuted into her life and ram-raided her sexuality. Now I'm supposed to believe you're her champion. I regret what I did to her. Like the suburban husband who comes home and gives his wife a bloody nose because he's been humiliated at work and... Oh, I'm so sorry, dear. I didn't mean to do it. I only hurt you because I care. Look at me. Please look at me. I'm so sorry. I love you, my darling. I'll get your foundation. That mark will cover up so easily. We need to leave for the Chesterton's party. They're expecting us for eight. What's suburban? What's foundation? Piss off. Mephistopheles, I order you to take me to Gretchen so that we can rescue her. <laughs> Executioner, have pity. The day of my death is set for tomorrow. Isn't that soon enough? I am young, you see, and, and I was pretty once. I had a lover, but he's far away. Please, may I live? What's the matter with her? She's been down here in this utter darkness for weeks. She's gone mad. Was that in the corner? I let her tell you. Are you all right? Let me help Don't you. I... clutch at me like that. I'm not ready to go. No, no. First, I must feed my baby. I had it last night. Now she's all tightly wrapped up. She's asleep, you see? I'll have to wake her up to feed her, won't I? Did she really have a baby? Yes, but that isn't it. Gretchen? Gretchen, it's me. That's my lover's voice. Where is he? He's here! I'm safe now. I'm free. Oh, my love. When she wakes up, you'll be able to cuddle your little baby. Mephistopheles. Yes? Was it my baby? Yes. You're here now. Oh, now all will be well. Mephistopheles. You didn't tell me what her crime was supposed to be. She didn't have her baby last night. It was weeks ago. And was it mine? Yes. And in her distress at being abandoned by you and seeing her brother die and him curse her, and in the madness that began to creep upon her, she murdered the little child. She murdered our child? What must she have felt to do such a thing? Oh, dear. You've stumbled over it at last. What? Human sympathy. That's torn it. How are you going to get your money's worth over the next four and twenty years? if you're no longer able to enjoy humiliating and despoiling others. Oh, kiss me, my darling. Gretchen, we have no time. We must go. But your lips are so cold. Your love is gone. Who 
Who's taken it away? Faustus, is it really you? Yes. I'll smother you with kisses later, but now we have to go. And our baby. I drowned it. I had to. See? See? There he is. Up the path, over the bridge, in the pond at the corner of the field. He struggles still. His legs are kicking. Oh, save him. Save Gretchen, him. Gretchen, don't say such things. We must go. The day is breaking. Yes, the day. It's my last day, you know. I thought it would be our wedding day, but my garland's all ruined. Don't tell anyone. I hear them outside. They're gathering in the square. I can see the gibbet. And now everyone is silent. So silent. Shh. I can't bear this. Come on. You're wasting time. The sun is rising. <gasps> it's him. He should not be here. Send him away. He's here to save oh, us. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't go with him. Why must I go with him? Do you think perhaps we ought to leave her? She's in such pain. Would the hangman perhaps be a mercy for her? She has been weighed in judgment. She killed her baby. She's mine now, and she must come with us. No, she stays. If you take her, I shall kill myself right here. I shall dash my brains out on the wall, and then you shall not have my soul, and you will have failed. Very well, Faustus. Come to me. We shall leave her. Oh, what fun we had then in my little room, Faustus. And we made our lovely baby. Oh, look at her asleep. So peaceful. So peaceful. In the end, it was a very boring 24 years. And truth be told, it always is. Of course, you can't tell people that before they get started. It's like, it's like, oh, I don't know. It's like blokes who sign up for one of those adult subscription channels. You know, it's all the nervousness and anticipation. You pay your money, really looking forward to seeing the hardcore stuff, the verboten, to experience the transfiguration from watching to participating. But when it comes, the reality is all low-rent, pallid bodies, out-of-condition blokes with girls from Dusseldorf with legs like road maps, and you've paid your money. No refunds are allowed, and you don't bother watching it again. Here, where we are, with our Doctor of Divinity, Faustus, it's just the same. Give me Helen of Troy, give me young virgins, let's tweak the Pope's nose. And then, after a few months, the shock of the new passes, and it's just a matter of trundling on until the term of the contract expires. Always a waste, but no one ever believes it until they've signed. It's the perfect business model. What happened to Gretchen? Do you really want to know? No. Yes. She was hanged. Did she suffer? No. It was a very moving occasion. There was a huge crowd. She emerged onto the scaffold in the morning light. And then they all got a real shock. Something they just weren't expecting. What happened? For God's sake, stop dragging it out. Don't be unkind. All I've got is stories. It's all anyone's got. They put the rope around her neck. She dropped. She was instantly transformed from animate human being to dead meat. 
crowd had seen it before, of course, but there was something different about this. The instant loss of the life force shut them up. The cheer died in their throats. The miracle that was Gretchen's life had suddenly been snatched away, and they all felt it. Even the Chav apprentice boys were still. They stood there swaying and staring like beasts that had been poleaxed the moment before their legs buckle. Poor kid. She's done okay, Faustus. She's on God's right hand right now. Her sins are forgiven, and she's sitting on a puffy white cloud with that baby of yours cradled in her arms. The glow of motherhood for eternity. Are you making that up? What do you think? Listen, I haven't told you, but there's a way out. You know. What do you mean? Well, you're bored, aren't you? Yes. You don't actually have to go the entire hundred yards. You can bail out and cut things short. You mean you'd release me from the contract? No, that's not what I'm saying. It's not up to me. But there is a way of cutting to the chase and releasing you from this cursed ennui that so afflicts you. How? We could amend the contract, shorten the term if you want. You could be out of here in somewhere much more interesting by the morning. I'm not convinced the benefits are that good, really. I mean, call me old-fashioned, call me timid. I'm not sure about swapping a bit of listlessness for boiling in the fires of hell. It's not that attractive a proposition. Yeah, but you might not have to broil for very long. We have training schemes, CPD, continuing professional development. It's all the rage. We have an obligation to look after our employees' personal and professional development. In a hundred years or so, maybe less, you could be back up here doing what I do. You get to see the world. The social life's fantastic. Would I get wings? No. You see, you're not an angel who's fallen from grace. Only angels have wings. I won't end up like that horrible thing that pretended to be Gretchen, will I? No, no, not at all. There's a costume, traditional makeup. It's evolved over hundreds of years, thousands, in fact. White face, drawn-in eyebrows, carmine lips, evening suit. Joel Grey in cabaret. What's a Joel Grey? What's a cabaret? Life is, my friend. Life's a cabaret. Old chum. No, you can stick it, Mephisto. I'm not going to let you off that easily. I'll serve my full term. Thank you very much. Guess what? What? How long do you reckon we've been talking? Uh, God knows. <sighs> That is one of the most offensive expressions. You all say it. God knows this. God knows that. He doesn't bloody know. He isn't actually all seeing. In fact, he's not even very bright. He's just methodical, ponderously, annoyingly methodical. And that's why he's let so much slip through the net. That's how you end up with the siege of Sarajevo. Oh no! We can't act too quickly. We have to consider the options. What's best? And that is precisely why you will end up with all that carnage because of his indecision. It's indecision that lets us in. It opens the way to evil. If he'd had the courage to stand by his manifesto and push on through like Batman, then the doorways that allow entrance to the likes of me would all be sealed up in no time. You're talking rubbish, aren't you? That's for me to know, and you'd find out. <laughs> so, how long do you think we've been talking? Look at your magic calendar. Can't be. No, yes, it can be, and it is. We've been sat here with our macchiatos for just over twenty-three years. I... Time's up. But I'm not ready. <laughs> That's what everyone says. But no, I... I mean it. Everyone, if not those exact words, then certainly a variation on that theme. I'm not ready. You've come too soon. Not me. What? Why me? Help me! This man wants to kidnap me. I'm, I'm being robbed. Please. I can't hear you. Let's go somewhere less busy. It might encourage you to behave with a bit of dignity. Myself. Everyone does. Let me go. No can do, I'm afraid. 
do something. Get me out of this. Oh, dear. You silly man. Listen, I know you don't like stories, but I'm going to tell you one anyway. I was on my way through a hospital. There was this chap who had signed with us, and he was in bed ready to peg out. So I was sent to make the collection. I hadn't seen him before. It was all very odd, actually, one of those clerical errors. The chap had signed up, but he didn't know he'd signed up. It was a mistake that had been made when we were changing over filing systems. D too long and boring to go into. You just have to take my word for it. So anyway, I found this chap in bed. He had cancer. I know, I know. Before you say it, no, he wasn't supposed to get cancer. But the timing wasn't too bad. The cancer and the end of the contract came in at the same time. Lucky for us. Anyway, he was literally on his deathbed. The relatives had been called, the nurses had their it won't be long faces on. Buckets of disinfectant had been filled, flannels, aprons and latex gloves were discreetly ready. The last thing he said, the last thing, despite the fact he knew he was about to die, do you know what it was? What? He reached out to his relatives, reached out with his skinny arms, those skinny arms with that transparent parchment skin. He reached out and he cried in the thinnest voice imaginable. Help me. There, in the middle of that end game, he cried out for help, as if there was still a chance he might be pulled back to this side of the veil. Faustus, my point is, no one gets away. I'm not going easily. I'm going to fight you. No, I wish you wouldn't. We broke into Dr. Faustus' study. No one had seen him for a couple of weeks, and there was a terrible smell coming from his room. Well, the place looked as if it had been the scene of some awful fight. There were dead creatures in cages. Horrible things. I don't know where he got them from. Half bird, half pig one of them was. The furniture had been overturned. Books and papers were scattered everywhere, and the... there was blood on the walls. Then, when we looked closer, we started finding bits of human body lying about, half hidden in the debris. The house had literally been torn apart. His left forearm was under the desk. His head was lying in the ashes in the fireplace. It was all singed at the back, but the face was unburned. The eyes and mouth were still wide open, the lips drawn back as if in the middle of a scream. And I'll never forget the expression in his eyes. Hello. Who's that? You shouldn't be in here. Quite a mess. What happened? Not sure. Who are you? It doesn't matter. I'm a colleague of Faustus. Was he attacked? Looks like it. You were an ambitious man when you were younger, weren't you, Wagner? It's a long time ago. I'm settled now. Anyway, how do you know about me? Faustus spoke about you. He admired you. I didn't know that. I thought I just annoyed him. Did you find anything? What do you mean? Maybe alongside the body or in one of the pockets. You mean that funny brass key? That's the one. It's the key to his special book collection. What sort of books? The books that brought him and me together. They're in a strong box, in the floorboards, under his workbench. You should have a look. They might interest you. Why? They might help you to become something more than you are. You're keen on music, aren't you, Wagner? There might be an opening in that direction, I think. An opening for a very single-minded sort of fellow who'd like to see the trains running on time. What's a train? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Just a figure of speech. You have a look at those books, and if you decide you're interested, just let me know. How will I do that? 
Don't worry. If you decide you want to talk, I'll know all about it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Faust was written by Martin Jenkins and Jonathan Holloway. Faust was played by Julian Rind Tutt. Mephistopheles was played by Mark Gatiss. Martha was Pippa Haywood. Gretchen, Jasmine Hyde. Wagner, Tom Tuck. And Valentine was Paul Mundell. The musicians were Kate Luxmore, Jane Harbour, Edward J, and Linda Begbie. The music was composed by John Nichols. Faust was directed in Bristol by Tim Dee.